What's up guys, it's Bucky here and welcome to your 39th JavaScript tutorial and in the last tutorial I taught you guys how to access and differentiate between different forms on your web page but now in this tutorial since we already have access to each form I'm going to show you how to access each element in those forms so let's go ahead and create a form but I didn't want to keep the old one from last time because I want to make it a little bit different so as we know from our XHTML tutorials, hopefully you watch those, each form can have a property called name. And I'm just going to set this form equal to Bucky's form. Simple enough. So now if we go ahead and end it, we can begin adding our elements. So let's just like before add a username, um, a password, and a submit button. So the username, all we need to do is just like last time, we'll just make an input box. So input type equals text and let's go ahead and add a name to this too so name equals users name simple enough so now if you just go ahead and and eh, we won't copy it so for the password box it would be input type equals might as well make a password I think I made it text in the last tutorial but that's definitely not secure so the name equals um password simple enough so let me just go ahead and test this right now hello didn't wanna look I got Yahoo son of a beach launching Chrome there we go so now we got a password box and a text box working perfectly so I might as well add a submit button I mean why not um input type equals submit value equals submit now let's go ahead and save it and refresh again and check it out we got a perfectly working form a username secret password and a submit button that does nothing at all pretty cool huh so like I said in order to access our form itself let's say we want to set it equal to a variable we would first write document since the forms array is an object of the document so then we would write forms and since this is our first form on our web page, we would go ahead and identify it by zero since everything in arrays start at zero. So after that, I told you guys that there is a way to access each element. So for example, if we wanted to access the first element right here, the forms array has a property already built in and that's the elements array. So elements zero would give you access to the first element in your form. Elements 1 would give you access to this and elements 2 would give you access to this. And you're saying alright why do I even want access to it and what's the use of it? What am I going to do with it? Well typically people want access to let's say they wanted to verify that the username only consisted of letters and numbers so when a user logs in your web page you don't want them to enter Bucky dollar sign percentage sign at sign semicolon semicolon you want like Bucky 65 Bucky 1492 so this is why you would want access to each element so for now since we're not validating any data all we're gonna do with this element is get a property of it and that's the name and again your form has a name called Bucky's form and each element has a name this one is username this one is password this one we didn't give a name so now the name of username since this is the first element in form 0 is going to be equal to the value username x equals username so now we just go ahead and document write this and if we print out x on the screen and save it and launch in chrome check it out it says username right there so one more quick example if we go ahead and access the second one by typing form 0 since it's the first form second element and go ahead and save this and then we go ahead and launch this in Chrome it says password right there pretty cool huh so you're saying alright simple enough whenever I want to access a form I just write form whatever number it is and then whenever I want to access an element I write element whatever number it is in the array but all these arrays are getting pretty confusing Bucky is there something easier that I can do yes there is instead of worrying about arrays you have a different option of accessing your forms and also your elements instead of using the forms array you can just go ahead and use the name of the form itself and this 
Oh, uh, I think I got a kennel cough. So anyways, let's just go ahead and copy the name of a form, which is Bucky's form. And instead of form 0, we're just going to go ahead and put Bucky's form in it just like that. So just to verify that it's working so far, let's go ahead and run Launching Chrome and check it out. We still get password. Pretty cool. So now we know that we can use the form name instead of using that dumb forms array. A whole lot more simple or a whole lot simpler. What is it? I don't know. I'll let you decide. So now what we can do is we can treat elements the same array. The same array. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up. The same way. If an element has a name, we no longer have to use that dumb old elements array. We can just go ahead and use the name of it, which is user's name in this case. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And of course, if we're writing code where we wanted to print out the name of an element, I mean the name's right here, so it's going to print out username. Kind of redundant, but anyways, this is just an example. So let's go ahead and launch this in Chrome. And we see, in fact, we can access that element using the name instead of the array. So anyways, probably printing out the name wasn't the best example, but hey, I did it anyway. So what I want to stress to you guys in this tutorial is in order to access each individual element in the forms array, we can either use the element array, simple enough, element and then the name of whatever um, element you want to use, or excuse me, the number of whatever element you want to use, or if it has a name, we can use that as well. So for example, we use Bucky's form right there and username right there and it worked fine. So with those two things we now have knowledge of how to access any item in our forms. Any item in any form on our web page. Pretty cool huh? So now that we have access to them we can begin, begin doing things like validating the data. Make sure they're filling. Checking whether or not a checkbox is checked. Checking whether a radio box is checked you know simple stuff like that so that's what I'm probably going to be covering in the next tutorial but for now that's all I have for you guys so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys later